I plan to solve all of the problems involving college athletics by the time you leave here. Uh, it won't be hard. Don't you think? No, we can do it in one word. One deregulate. Word. Deregulate. Yeah, it's over. So how about there that? You go. Let's start right there. <laughs> deregulate. That's it. Simple. And it's because today is the last day on planet Earth in the United States of America in college athletics where name, image, and likeness laws will not be on the books and kids will not be will 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 be, if you will, not allowed to make money off of their name, image, and likeness, likeness, correct? Today's the last day. Basically, yeah. So today's the last day that amateurism has at least a shadow meaning in our culture mm -hmm. because the NCAA has said for over 100 years that college sports are pure amateur and that players cannot receive any remuneration for their athletic reputation or for play. Mm -hmm. And NIL has been part of that sort of commercials. NIL means name, image, and likeness, as you mentioned. And that means, you know, being in commercials, doing an ad, things like that, uh, putting your name on a camp, uh, teaching, teaching the sport uh, that you, you uh, participate in to young people, uh, you know, giving tennis lessons if you're a tennis player right. and using your name associated with it. Um, now, so that was deemed to be professional. So now the, the NCAA has given up on that. And now they're saying our players are professional. Now we're still not going to pay them. Now, now they've made the distinction that the players cannot be employees of the university. So they, they've moved the goalposts to mm. use a, you know, another sports metaphor. Right. But to, to, they've moved the goalposts there. But, but amateurism is dead, basically. And, it's, and, and so um, tomorrow, how many states? Have, have oh, these I don't know laws how in the many, book? But, so but like six, I, th I think I read it was at like least six. That. Here and, in California, yeah. Florida, right? Mm -hmm. And and it, once you once you include Florida, I mean, certainly in college athletics, certainly in college football, I mean, that's all she wrote. I mean, the dominoes are going to have to fall here. Well, it, it's it's all she wrote. I mean, California started all this right. uh, when Senator Nancy Skinner put legislation forward called the Fair Pay to Play Act. Uh, that's what started, and it shows you what competition looks like in America. As soon as other states saw that California was doing it, they're like, well, we have to keep up. And it shows what athletes are worth, that this is all being done because everybody's worried about access to players, that, that this, is gonna, this is gonna give a recruiting advantage to one state or another. So what the NCAA is doing now, because they got their tails handed to them in the Supreme Court uh, over the Alston case, uh, where they were again found to be a antitrust violator, mm -hmm. a serial antitrust violator. Now the NCAA is afraid to have any restrictions on athletes with regard to name, image, and likeness at all. So they're saying uh, right now, starting tomorrow, you can, any school can do whatever your state allows, mm -hmm. or you can fashion your own NIL policy if your state doesn't spell it out for you. And so they, they've basically punted, punted on NIL. Yeah, yeah, punted. Well, they, they're totally unprepared. They didn't expect to lose at the Supreme Court level, um, but they've they've had their heads in the sand for a long time on this. This was coming, and they haven't passed anything. They haven't done anything. They wanted to wait. A lot of them wanted to wait until the outcome of the Supreme Court case, and well, and I don't think they expected to get it handed to them. Jay on Billis that level. here on the Rich Eisen show, especially with Brett Kavanaugh chiming in with his own two cents, essentially saying, "Hey." Um, Everybody who wants to bring more litigation to show off the antitrust violations that the NCAA appears to be perpetrating on a mass level, bring it because it, you know it looks like they they are antitrust violators on a mass level, and players could get paid legitimately paid. Yeah, for that's their where we're headed. So if, if you if you went back a little bit, not to bore you with sort of some of this legal stuff, but all this stems back to 1984 mm -hmm. when there was a case called the Board of Regents case, the Oklahoma and Georgia Board of Regents. So that was the last time the NCAA was in front of the United States Supreme Court. But that was a, a case that was brought by schools against the NCAA saying, you can't tell us how many times we can be on television. Mm -hmm. The NCAA used to tell schools you can only be on television so often because they were worried it was going to affect, they'd oversaturate the TV market uh -huh. and it'd affect gate receipts. Like people stopped coming to the games. That, that, the infinite wisdom of the NCAA, the television money was a, a pittance compared to <laughs> ticket sales. So they sued uh, on, under the same theory that the players just did, antitrust, and won. Now, in that case, 
was some language that is referred to as dicta, like offhand comments by the court that had nothing to do with the ruling mm -hmm. that said that the thing that separates uh, the NCAA from the pros is the players cannot be paid. And that's been used by courts all those years to really, for the NCAA to win their cases on the amateurism front. Uh, and and so the courts gave great deference to the NCAA. They probably won 75% of their cases in court. The Alston case that just got decided mm -hmm. took all that away. Like the court said, nope, this doesn't matter anymore. It was wrong at the time. You, it was used as dicta. It shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. uh, it was used essentially as, as law, and it shouldn't have been, mm -hmm. and no longer. And from now on, NCAA, you are going to have to justify your business practices in every case and show that your policies are not anti-competitive and, and make a pro-competitive justification for it. And Kavanaugh said, in a concurring opinion, that... Um, the NCAA's, the way the NCAA does business with regard to athletes would be illegal in any other industry. Like if they tried to do that to restaurant workers and said, you know, all restaurant workers have to work for the love of the love of the, the love business. of the food. Yeah, the love of food. Um, that'd be illegal. Right. I mean, he did. He went. He went down a list of like medical workers. If they did it just for 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 medicine, you know, for the good of the public good, be illegal. Uh, if he did it in law, it'd be Ill for love of the law. It'd be illegal. And, and the last line in there was the NCAA is not above the law. And if, if people think that courts around the country mm -hmm. are not going to take that as this is what we have to do now, like the, 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 the deference that the NCAA got is over. And, and not, a, not just on, on sort of academic benefits, which the Alston case was about, but name, image, and likeness and actual pay. I don't think the NCAA is gonna be able to win these cases going forward. So. Uh, Jay Bill is here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, maybe the, a law can be written to save them because that's uh, I'm already reading that Mitch McConnell's come out and said maybe we need to pass a law to you know assist the NCAA. I'm kind of putting I don't know if you use the word assist, but maybe we need a law here to address what's going on in the NCAA. Are they like lobbying Congress to basically say oh, yeah. come in here and? Let's write a law where we don't have to pay players and run yeah. that up the Supreme Court flagpole. The NC, well, the Supreme Court wouldn't have anything to do with that. If if Congress passes a law, that's that's going to carry the day. Okay. That's really what the court says. Like if Congress wants to step in and take care of this, they can. Right. And give give the NCAA an antitrust exemption and allow them to continue to violate that's antitrust where they law. Would go. Right. That's where they're going. So the NCAA will ask for an antitrust exemption. I cannot imagine that Congress, as divided as it is, mm -hmm. would give a serial antitrust violator an antitrust exemption when they're making billions of dollars and say, okay, but you can keep restricting this one aspect of the business here, which, which clearly it's being proven now is, is very valuable to you and very valuable in the open market and the free market. Uh, so I would have a hard time imagining that's going to happen, but there is a thought process out there right now that without a national standard, you know, people use the term wild, wild west, which I just call business. Uh, they also say bidding wars, there's gonna be bidding wars for players. That's called business. You know, the rest of the world, that's called business. If mm -hmm. somebody, if one entity offers you a contract and another entity says, no, we'll see that and raise it, mm -hmm. and they go back and forth, or, or you're buying a house and you bid on it, that's called business. Um, so we can handle this. It's not that big of a deal. The, the one thing, Rich, I'm hopeful of, and I believe will happen, is from July 1 forward, mm -hmm. when we don't have federal legislation, people are going to find that the world will not spin off its axis. Uh, the games will go off on time. Everybody, their checks are going to clear. Everything's going to be okay. And doomsday isn't around the corner in college sports. Uh, it's not a big deal. Like the the just like we've had we've had drastic change since 1984 since that last uh, Supreme Court case the Board of Regents case, we've had drastic change, but it's all been on the revenue side. So there's been there's been incredible increases in revenue generated, mm -hmm. and then in in salaries paid, in facilities built, and nobody had a problem with it. Nobody said put the brakes on this, stop this. We got to go to Congress to stop this. Nobody said that. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.